Good morning and welcome to the 10th meeting of 2017 of the Environment, Climate Change Land Reform Committee. The committee has received apologies from Jenny Goldruth. Before we move to the first item on the agenda, can I remind everyone present to ensure their mobile phones are on silent for the duration of the meeting. The first item on the agenda is for the committee to consider whether it wishes to take items four and five in private. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. The second item on the agenda this morning is to take evidence on the Carbon Accounting Scheme Scotland Amendment, Amendment Regulations 2017 draft. We're joined this morning by Cabinet Secretary Rosanna Cunningham. Good morning. John Ireland, Deputy Director of Decarbonisation, and Tom Rosson, Policy Advisor for Decarbonisation Division. Good morning to all of you. Cabinet Secretary, can I invite you to make a short opening statement on the draft? Thanks, uh, Convener. Um, given that this draft... Uh, SSI is of a very technical nature. I, I thought it would be useful just to say something about the background. Uh, it's also very useful to me to have the two technical experts here um, uh, this morning uh, as well. Um, all of the emission reduction targets in the 2009 Climate Change Act are set on the basis of the net Scottish emissions account, which includes an adjustment to account for the operation of the EU emissions trading scheme in Scotland. The calculations which implement this adjustment are set out in the Carbon Accounting Scheme regulations under the Act. And until there's a new Climate Change Act, the Scottish Government is, of course, committed to discharging its obligations under the existing 2009 Act. And one of the key obligations in this regard is the statutory reporting on annual emission reduction targets. For each annual target from 2013 onwards, it has been necessary to use routine sets of amendment regulations to introduce new provisions to the Carbon Accounting Scheme regulations in order to allow for the next year's calculation to occur. The present draft SSI makes the third such set of routine technical amendments, which will allow for statutory reporting on the 2015 annual target to occur later this year. The draft SSI also makes two amendments, again of a purely technical character, to existing provisions in the Carbon Accounting Scheme regulations, one of which updates the definition of one of the listed types of carbon unit so as to reflect the current phase of the EU emissions trading scheme. The nature of this particular update means that the Act requires the present instrument to be considered under the affirmative procedure as opposed to the negative procedure which has been applicable previously. Um, I'm happy to answer members' questions or perhaps more correctly my officials might be a better <laughs> place to answer these questions. I suspect members may well have questions. Can I invite <laughs> members? David Stewart. Uh, th thank you, Convener. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I have no particular issue with the SSI, <laughs> but I, as you know, I've got a particular interest in the EU emissions trading scheme, which you recall I've I raised in the debate and I think I raised at this committee before. I appreciate that's not something uh, you, Cabinet Secretary, have a particular lever of power over. Nevertheless, you'll be well aware that the ETS is made up of the 28 uh, EU members and the three EEA members, of which the UK is a member of obviously both. Uh, my concern is what, what happens if during negotiations uh, we are no longer part of ETS. I've already raised the issue, would you rerun the times model to include this? But this effectively takes the rules away from the game. Uh, have your department looked at a scenario where ETS would not be part, would, that the Scotland would not be part of ETS? Well, I mean, obviously the possibility that uh, that will be the case is something that we at the moment have to live with. I've had... Um, some conversation with my um, Westminster counterpart. Um, I think it's fair to say that at the UK government level, their thinking hasn't really crystallised around anything uh, in relation to this particular area. So at this point, we, we haven't got a, a clear path forwards. Um, I mean, obviously, the draft SSI has to reflect the fact that the EU emissions trading scheme was operational in Scotland in 2015, and that doesn't change no matter what the future is. Mm -hmm. The EUTS uh, will apply in 2015, will apply in 2016, will apply in 2017, will apply in 2018. Mm -hmm. Keep going. After that, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that, that's the, the, the point I think I'm making is that we yeah. will be dealing with these carbon accounting regulations in respect of the EUTS uh, for 
some time yet, because in actual fact, the time lag means that we will be discussing the 2017 situation in 2019. The fact that by 2019, in theory, we could be out of EUTS doesn't mean that in 2017 we were out of EUTS. So we've got, we're, you know, we're dealing, because we're dealing with that couple of years time lag, we're always going to be dealing with the EUTS, um, uh, um, at least into the foreseeable future. Um, and, uh, and uh, I, you know, I can't, I can't, we can't operate uh, on any other way. Um, I mean, clearly there's an uncertainty for the, for the future um, mm. uh, in respect of that. Um, should circumstances change regarding the EU TS, then adjustments could in fact be made uh, to the carbon accounting scheme regulations if required. W what I can't say is what they would be because I don't know what would potentially replace any EU TS. Yeah, um, my final question. Uh, I mean, have you considered asking your officials to go away and work up um, a UK ETS system uh, on the basis that it's obvious from next week we're going to have Article 50 triggered. We need to look at some form of contingency planning. I appreciate you can't um, f look at the crystal ball and detect what will happen in 2019, but there's a strong chance that we could be out of this system because the, the current members, as the name suggests, are all EU or EEA. We're not going to be in either body in two years' time. Well, you, you're, you're well, you're asking me to task Scottish Government officials to come up with a scheme for the whole of the UK? I'm, I'm asking, is it possible you could raise with uh, my colleagues it. in the UK and see whether a UK system is one that is viable? I have raised it. They are currently not considering a UK system. Right. OK, thank you. I can't, I mean, beyond that, I'm really not okay. in a position to be able to say one way or the other. It's useful to get that on the record, however. Cabinet Secretary, can I pick up on something in the papers we have here? It says the domestic aviation cap and international aviation cap are calculated in a similar approach to the UK's domestic aviation cap. Um, daft laddie question, but <coughs> I, I thought the rest of the UK didn't count aviation emissions uh, into its figures. In fact, I thought we were the only country in the EU that counted aviation emissions. Could somebody clarify that for me? Um, yeah, um, we, as far as we know, um, we're not aware of any other EU country who does this. Um, and as far as I know, the UK doesn't either. So I'm not quite sure what the, um, mm. yeah, perhaps a few could. I mean, I, I, as far as I know, we're yeah. the only ones that do. Yeah. Can I clarify? Um, the distinction here is between including domestic aviation emissions, uh, which the UK does include in its progress to its statutory emission reduction targets, and including a share of international aviation emissions, which only Scotland does. Right. Okay. That, okay, that's the difference. Okay. And across the EU, do most of the countries count their domestic, but not their share of international, or do they not count it at all? So under the uh, EU emission trading scheme, um, Emissions for flights within the EU are uh, available for trading under the scheme. So you effectively have a distinction between different types of international aviation then. Okay, All right, thank you. And can I also ask when we can expect the Scottish figures uh, this year? Uh, well, as far as I'm aware, it'll be the same as previous years, which is to say June. June. Um, June. Okay. I, I think the normal process is that I would give a statement in June. Uh, I think. You, you're, you're required to give a statement yeah. um, towards the by the end by October the thirty first. But it's normally, was it not normally being? Oh right, no. The, the sorry, the stats are published in June. I yeah. think the statement can come later. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's okay, right. so we can expect the, the stats. The stats to be uh, before the in, summer recess. In 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 June, right. yes, before yeah. the summer recess. Okay, thanks. And the, the exact date of those will be pre-announced the month before. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Cordy Beamish? Morning, Cabinet Secretary and officials. Could, could I just ask if there would be any concerns in relation to um, this affirmative instrument in, in um, your view in relation to um, meeting our targets? Is there anything that is subs altered in, in a way that, that would give us concern? No. Thanks for that reassurance. No, no, I no, found no it, it doesn't. Quite difficult to be it's, frank. Yes, to it's very technical, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't okay. change anything in, in, in that Thanks. sense. Yes. Thank you. ask about backloading as well. In previous years there's been a withholding of carbon, I think in order to 
make the ETS work a bit better and raise the carbon price. So how does that relate to this SSI that's been put forward this morning? <coughs> so did that, yep. So uh, the methodology for determining Scotland's share of the uh, EU emissions trading scheme cap for 2015 uh, has been published in a technical paper by um, Scottish Government analysts. Uh, I believe that paper has been... Um, uh, sorry, uh, a link to the papers are provided in the accompanying policy note for the draft SSI. Um, the methodology for undertaking that uh, calculation uh, has not changed from previous years. Uh, it's been subject to stakeholder consultation and it's in line with the recommendations of the Committee on Climate Change. Does that help? Uh, I was kind of wanting a little bit more of an explanation. I mean, I think previous years uh, carbon targets have been been met partly because emissions from heavy industry have been backloaded effectively. So I'm interested to know what the implications are for this year, because I think the assumption was that there'd be more carbon coming onto the system later on because of previous, previously withheld emissions quotas. But <coughs> are you correct. actually ask, asking a question now about how the, the stats will be will be made up when when we get them? I mean. Uh, as opposed to the, these regulations? Well, yeah, I, mean, I was specifically asking about the backloading arrangements, the withholding of carbon in previous years through the ETS arrangements and how that is reflected or not in this year's so it, ETS it, it, arrangements. This doesn't really change. So it will be reflected in this year's uh, calculation in a manner which is exactly consistent with previous years. Right. So w w what the current draft SSI is doing is setting out the kind of the, the cap side of the calculation, the emission statistics, which will come in June, will set out kind of what actually happened side right. of the calculation. Um, on, the, on the cap side, the approach which has always been taken is that there's a defined methodology which takes the whole EU ETS cap, which, as you say, uh, has these kind of adjustment features within itself in relation to backloading, um, and then apportions out a Scottish share of that. And the method for apportioning out that Scottish share remains the same as in previous right, years. Okay. So it will reflect the current situation regarding backloading through that same calculation. Right, OK. OK, that's clear. Thank you. Any other questions? No? OK. The third item on our agenda today is consideration of motion S5M04481 that the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee recommends that the Carbon Accounting Scheme Scotland Amendment Regulations 2017 draft be approved. Um, there is an opportunity for a 90-minute debate on this subject. <coughs> um, I suspect that may not be necessary. Um, Cabinet Secretary, can I invite you to speak to and move the motion? Um, can I just formally move the motion? That's fine, thank you. Uh, do any of the members wish to speak? Excellent. Cabinet Secretary, do you wish to wind up? Okay. <laughs> we'll oh, I would love it. to wind up. <laughs> yes, right. So I put the question on the motion. The question is that motion S5M04481 in the name of Rosanna Cunningham be approved. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Um, the committee's report will confirm the outcome of the debate. Um, are members content to delegate the signing off of the report to the convener? Yep. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary and your yep. officials. Uh, at its next meeting on March 28, the committee will take evidence on the review of the Protection of Wild Mammals Scotland Act 2002 from Lord Bonamy, the chair of the review. The committee will also consider the protection of seals designation of haul-out sites Scotland Amendment Order 27. As agreed earlier, we will now move into private session. I ask that the public gallery be cleared as the public part of the meeting is now closed. <laughs>